Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the growing family. Today we're doing a collaboration with the wonderful Alana. Hi guys, my name's Alana. Today we're collaborating on a video of self-harm coping skills. So when it comes to self-harm coping strategies and skills, this is something that I have kind of developed over time. Um, I think it's important to remember that it may take you a while to figure out what coping skills actually work because n not everyone will have the same ones and I think it just takes a bit of trial and error until you find some things that work. Uh, I might go through a couple of things that I found helpful just in case any of you guys want to try it. I am currently four months self-harm free. I'm almost a year and a month free from self-harm. So I would say the first uh, coping skill would be distraction. So for me that was a really big one. Um, I, Whenever I would get a, like be triggered or I get an urge to self-harm, I would just go and do a task. So that may be something just like cleaning my house or um, filming and editing a YouTube video, could be doing some singing or listening to some really good music, watching um, your favourite TV show, anything like that. Just have a list of things written down that you can then just go pick from and I think that really helps because then you don't have to really think about it in the moment. You can just choose one. Having a shower or a good bath? I, I like to have a bath when I get urges. It really helps. I have a really hot bath. I don't run any cold water into that. It's just full on hot. The other one that um, is often recommended, which you might have heard, is to use your body to kind of physically um, calm down. So in DVT, there's a acronym called TIP. So um, this can be really helpful for some people. So T is for temperature. I is for intense exercise and then there's two P's so paired muscle relaxation and then uh, paired I think it's called paired breathing um, or oh, paced breathing paced breathing so those ones require you to do something with your body so obviously exercise really intensely for like 10 minutes maybe or um, fill up your sink with really cold water and put your face in it and hold your face in there for about 30 seconds or as long as you can because it actually triggers off a um, kind of like a it kind of reboots your body um, and it, because it's such a shock to your system like to your body it can often kind of pull you out of that state of um, you know like if you're dissociating or not really being able to think right, that can be uh, helpful as well. Going for a walk, sprint, bike ride. Personally, I, I've never done this. I used to go for walks to try and cope with suicidal thoughts. Dripping red food colouring to make it seem like blood, but without it being actually being blood. Using a fidget toy. There's a lot of them out there. I've got a box full of them. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it on the iCard. Getting a punch bag. Now, I don't own a punch bag, so I punch a pillow. Same effect. Another thing that I would recommend is to start journaling. Every time you have an urge, um, start journaling because there may be specific triggers that are coming up that are actually triggering you. So a lot of the time when we have self-harm urges, we kind of think, well, that came out of the blue. I have no idea why I had the urge, I just had the urge. Nine times out of ten, there will be a reason why you have that urge, and it can be very hard to figure that out. So if you start journaling and just writing what happened before you felt triggered, why you you know why you felt triggered, did you act on the trigger, um, just all of that, it's like collecting data. And over time, you will start to hopefully find patterns and be able to figure out kind of why you're doing it. Because I think. All these other coping skills do work, but at the end of the day, you do have to figure out what's under all those layers and why you're actually doing it. Um, so you can then use the distraction and coping skills to address the issue. Going on medication. Now, medication is one of the sole reasons I stop self-harming. 
because I just didn't get the urges when I was on medication. Taking a nap. This is one of my signature moves. <laughs> Whenever I start to feel down or get urges, I have a nap. So I hope that that helped you guys. Um, I have found, you know, obviously fighting off urges very hard at the beginning. But when it, when it gets, you know, more time starts happening and it goes by and then you haven't acted on the urge, um, it becomes easier, it really does. You just have to kind of push through that like initial stage, which can be really horrible um, and can honestly feel like you're going insane. But it does pay off, like I promise you it really does. So yeah, I'm going to leave you there. Um, hopefully this was helpful. And um, I will see you in my next video.